the man said to my to me and my father, he said, I'll tell you what, I can this is a big man sport. I can make him wider and thicker, but I can't make him taller. If you want to join the school, it's three grand, but I guarantee you you're never gonna make a dime in this business. And so I'm like, well that's a lot of you know <laughs> that gets me a lot of <laughs> pat on the back and incentive to go out and do it. But you know what? That just made me mad. Like don't tell me I can't do something. That's kind of the way it got started. And so I gave the guy, my dad said, you want to do this? Yeah. I gave the guy my money, and out of the 12, I'm the only one that's still wrestling. And my dad said, hey, listen, Dory Funk Jr. called here. And I went, who? He goes, Dory Funk Jr. <laughs> called you? He goes, yeah. He goes, there's a guy named Bill Watts. It's, it's, it's expanding a place over in Louisiana. Uh, he, he got the place from Leroy McGurk. And um, they're, they're taking anybody. And he said, you got a job, be there in two weeks. And Summers picks it up off of Swede's bag, and he's sitting there reading it. When Swede come back through, he slapped him out of the chair totally. I mean, he did it upside down. <laughs> when the program went flying, he took the pick the program up. He said, hey, did I tell you you could go into my bag? He said, that's my tools. That's how I feed my family. And you don't touch nothing unless you ask me out of respect. Bill Watts came just like this on TV, and he said, you guys need to kayfabe. And if you see, like if I was sitting in the bar and I'm drinking and say um, Paul Orndorff came in and we got an angle going, right? Paul knows to turn around and leave because I was there first. Or if he doesn't, I would. I mean, because right, right. you know what? If I get caught in that situation, he, you'd get if I told uh, one of the hard boys, I need to lift weights. You know, I need to train. And I, he said, okay. So we went to the dungeon. Oh, wow. And I'm lifting weights. All of a sudden I hear you. I said, that's, that's, I look up, here comes Stu, right? Now. Just oh, like God. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> here he comes, right? And he's going, hey, shake your lady. Uh, nice to meet you, you know. I said, nice to meet you, sir, you know, and all that, and being respectful. He said, you want me to show you a few things here on the mat? I go, Stu. <laughs> I said, listen, Whoa. I know everything I need to know about that man. I'm looking over, his nails sticking out of the wall. I go, <laughs> <laughs> everything I need to know about that mat. I go, I just came here to work and try to draw as much money as I possibly can for you. He just started laughing. He thought that was funny. I showed him respect, and, and believe me, I didn't respect him. I'm like, what happened? So I thought, well, somebody must have gotten a damn fight. Because if that ever happens, you know, they start a fist fight in the crowd, mm -hmm. you might as well just get a whole wait till the fight's over. Because everybody's going to watch the fight. Right, everybody's going to watch that <laughs> instead of you Then guys. when that's over, because you're wasting your time in the ring. So when they come back, then you can start your match. So I just got a hold on dogs. Well, I'll stay here until the fight's over. So I had a little bit. I see everybody get up and start getting back in their seats, and they started getting with it. We went ahead and had a match. And so when I come back to the back, the police officer says, Hey, Mr. Cropper, can I speak to you a minute? He said, Yeah. He said, This guy, you need to shake his hand. I'm talking about another officer. He goes, He just saved your life. I go, What do you mean? He goes, Did you see all those people jumping under their seats? They were hiding from the guy with a pistol. I don't know how he would say that because Jake started using it in his territory, but. Here's my version of it, okay? <laughs> we were in Lake Charles, Louisiana, okay? And that was one of those times where they had me in a position where I was wrestling like, because uh, they had Junkyard Dog and the Freebirds on top. And so they could only get a limited amount of time. Because, I mean, you, they're flying all over and they're doing all these things, you know, with tables, chairs, whatever. They, and so they're like the gimmick type match. But to, for the wrestling match, I was in the semi every night. So I, they would tell me, you got to get the bulk of the time. So go 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And that wasn't uncommon back then, you know, 30 minute match. And so this night we were in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and it was really hot in the summer. And, and we were, I was, we were working a thing where Jake was going to the front face lock. Like, and I'd call a spot out of it. Like I'd sit out, hit the ropes, tackle, drop down, hit the, kick me and get to the front face lock and work me back down to the mat. And, you know, we were just going back to the front face lock. This one particular move we did, my foot slipped out from under me. His did too, and we went straight down like a DDT. And when we did, the people popped. And I said, Jake, did you hear that? I said, man, let's try that again. And so we did it again, but the next time he slapped me on the back real loud. And they really popped. One time, uh, a thing happened where um, Tully was leaving the ring in, in Corpus Christi in Texas. And, um, and then uh, there was a great big Mexican guy, and he... He was calling Tully all kinds of stuff. And, you know, the boys back then would watch each other's back. You know, and so this guy, I said, told Tony, we better go out there. You know, so the guy's fixing to, I think the guy took a poke 
at Tully and the security's there. So we go out and then we're just kind of watching his back. And so Tully, they almost get into it and the guy went down. And the guy, as the guy went down, I just kind of had my shot. I don't know why I talk about I kicked the guy. Wham! And I kicked him. When I kicked him, it split his lip from here all the way up to his eye. And he goes, oh, wow. I had a big old boot on, you know. And so anyway, the guy's laying there. And so let's get to the back. Let's get to the back. So we go and we take a shower and they get paid. And I go look and the guy's still laying out there with, with the medics. And I'm like, holy cow. I'm not even, you know, now I'm afraid I really I killed the guy or something, you know. And so he's still laying out. And so they, they say he come around on the way to the hospital. And so the guy says, can we do it in the ring? I'll get in the ring, and you guys be outside, and you and Tony, and then whenever, or Grappler too. And he says, when I hit the call letters of the station, like this is JWKP whatever coming to you from, can you get in the ring, pick me up like you're going to slam me, and we'll go off the air like that. And I go, yeah, that's cool. That, that works for me. That's all you want me to do? He goes, yeah. Okay. So, man, I'm sitting there, and the guy goes, well... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, glad you could join us. Here we are at the fair. We had the wrestling show. And, well, you know, folks, everybody knows wrestling's fake. Oh, wow. And I looked at Tony and go, did you hear You're that? kidding. Yeah, I go, watch this. He goes, everybody knows wrestling's fake. The fans do. The wrestlers behind me do. And, uh, but you know what? They didn't, know, they didn't hurt each other. And everybody had a good time. Everybody enjoyed it. And so we're glad we could... You know, the, the, they brought the wrestling to the town, and he said, this is so-and-so at KW, and he started hitting the call letters. I slid in, I bellied the back, and knocked him out. <laughs> 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 I grabbed the mic, and I slapped him in the face as hard as I could, and I put the mic down. I said, what did you call wrestling? And the guy's out, okay? <laughs> so then I threw the mic on him and spit on him and walked off. And when I walked in the door, he's sitting there with Roddy Piper. And I went, yes, I'm fired. <laughs> they must have got the phone bill. <laughs> so I'm not kidding you. I walked in and Don Owen says, we just want to bring you here today to let you know you're fired. <laughs> I go, thanks a lot, Don. And Ronnie's laughing, right? And I start laughing. I go, well, Don, I told you I'd get my money back one way or the other. I didn't know I was going to get fired over it. But he, I, he said, yeah, Ronnie's going to take over. He's a new boss. Well, Roddy was going to help out, right? So here's what's crazy about it. Roddy goes, I'm still doing movies and and he was just fixing to go on a love boat and do a thing and all that. He says, so Don, I'm going to have to have an assistant, and I'd like to hire Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> For the same pay. <laughs> wow. And so I went right back to work. I got fired and rehired. All just on in the a same different, table. All the same table in a different position at the same meeting. <laughs>